Did you know that there are some things that are said about cruising so often that people believe it to be true? Well, these are actually myths or misconceptions, and even sometimes they're downright lies. We're going to go over that in this video and dispel a lot of the untruths, especially in 2021. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com and I love cruising. Yes, from the very first time that my husband and I went on a cruise in 2004, we were absolutely hooked. Well, at the time, we had different things that we believed about cruising and, well, a lot of these misconceptions are still around. So I wanted to make this video to kind of set the record straight. But at the same time, in 2021, I am hearing some new cruise myths that are really so untrue that I absolutely felt that I had to make this video. Now, if you are new to cruising, I think that there will be some cruise tips that will definitely help you out. And if you are a lover of cruising, well, please let me know in the comments below what other cruise myths that you have heard that you know are untrue. Now, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, don't forget to do so because I would love to have you in the Life While Cruise family. Let's get started. So let's start off with one that is repeated so often. It's a little bit silly, but so many people still believe it. And that is that cruising is for old people. Now there's nothing wrong with people as they get older, of course, but it's just not true. Cruising is nowadays for everybody. So it is for families with young children. It is for couples. It is for solo travelers. It is for older travelers. It is really for everybody, but there is a different experience that different cruise lines and different ships and even different itineraries will offer on board. So if you're somebody who wants a very active vacation and you want to have a lot of activities on board, you'll want to make sure that you choose a cruise ship that has that. Some cruise ships have zip lines on board. Some cruise ships have parting into the wee hours and other cruise ships, of course, are a little bit more quiet. I do think that that has less to do with the age of the passenger and more to do with the interest of the passenger. So definitely, as you are choosing a cruise, discuss this with your travel agent or even do a little bit of research on different websites before. But some things to think about is that if you want a cruise ship with more younger people, generally this is a cruise ship that is seven days or less. Generally, this is a cruise ship with more activities on board, such as water slides and other more active type of activities. And you can choose something that is during these school breaks if you do have children and you want more activity and more younger people on board. Number two, that you're going to have to dress super fancy during your cruise and you have to have an evening gown or a tux for dinners in the evening. Now that is just something that isn't true anymore because cruises have become much more casual than in the past. However, there are dress codes, so I don't want to make it seem like there aren't, but some cruise lines are really much more casual and others are a little more traditional. An example of one that's more traditional is Cunard that is very formal. An example of one that is much more casual is Norwegian cruise line which is freestyle but the rest of them pretty much fall in the middle and obviously you do want to check with your travel agent and you do want to know about the dress codes in advance but you can pretty much wear what you would normally wear to a restaurant at home in the main dining rooms and restaurants and if you want to wear something a little bit more casual you can go to the buffet and there will be a couple of evenings that are dressy evenings formal nights or chic nights where you would dress up a little bit more Think about it like wedding guest attire. Number three, I'll be bored on a cruise ship. I'll feel stuck. It'll feel small. I know that is the worry that some people genuinely have. Perhaps it's because we've watched all of those old reruns of The Love Boat, but cruise ships today are big. Even the smaller cruise ships are big and there's so much to do. So from activity oriented ships where there are water slides and zip lines and even race cars and laser tag where you definitely couldn't be bored to other cruise ships that have solariums and spas and cruise ship gyms and just tons of activities to do no matter what your interest is. Well, you just couldn't be bored nowadays on a cruise. If you've been on a cruise, please let me know what your favorite things to do are, especially on a sea day on a cruise ship. Number four, that cruise ships are unsafe. Now, this is absolutely something that's not true. Cruise ships take safety and security very seriously. And before leaving from the embarkation port, they have a safety drill or a muster drill with all the passengers and crew during the 
crews. They're also running safety drills with the crew. They're checking the lifeboats. Um, there is fire safety all the time on a cruise ship, meaning that you can't bring things that could potentially start a fire on a cruise, including even an iron um, or even a steamer for your clothes. So they are really, really cautious about safety. Now, what about people falling overboard? Now, this is obviously something sad when we do hear of anybody falling overboard. This does not actually happen often, but the railings are very high. And generally, when these things happen, it is because somebody has climbed over a railing or done something that's very dangerous. And it's just like, I guess, being on a tall building or on a resort somewhere, we wouldn't want to do things that are dangerous. And that is the same thing on a cruise ship. So we do always have to exercise caution on a cruise ship vacation, just like we have to anywhere else that we might be on a vacation. Myth number five, I won't like cruising because the pools are always crowded and it's full of kids and people partying on cruise ships. Now, this is obviously something that's not true of every cruise ship. Every cruise ship and every cruise line is different and does cater to a different demographic. So if you do not like that type of environment, you won't want to cruise during spring break. You won't want to cruise on school breaks on cruise ships that are family orientated, but many other cruise ships won't have that environment at all. And I have to say on the majority of the cruises that we've been on, we haven't actually even experienced a crowded pool. Number six, that you'll be seasick on a cruise. Now, while in the past, if you had been on a cruise like in the 1970s and 80s, or if you've been on a ferry, you probably would get seasick. But today's cruise ships are quite large. They're built for comfort and they have stabilizers that really, well, do make the cruise very, very comfortable. And on the most part, you're not even gonna feel like you're on a cruise ship at all. However, I do wanna caution you that you are still on the ocean and you might still feel what they call the motion of the ocean. So do make sure that you do bring some over-the-counter medication for potential seasickness, just in case, even if it is just for a few hours or a day, or you can bring a sea band or even have a little bit of something natural like ginger with you. Number seven, I'm gonna get a little bit serious with this one now because there are many people who do believe that cruises have caused the spread of this virus. Now, of course, cruises did not spread this virus. Yes, we did have originally the Diamond Princess that all eyes were on the Diamond Princess and we all saw this virus spread on that cruise ship. And that is how even scientists have learned about how this virus does spread. But cruises obviously did not spread this virus. And Cruises haven't even been sailing since about mid to the end of March at the latest. So they definitely couldn't have spread this virus to the entire world. And in that entire time, of course, we've had planes that have flied and we've had different people in different places who've gone about their daily business without even wearing masks a lot of the time. So how could cruises have been the cause of spreading this virus? But for some reason, this myth is, um, is perpetuated definitely on social media, um, I definitely see this and perhaps it doesn't help when we do have the CDC that is singling out cruises. Please let me know what you think. If you've seen this said, if you believe it, if you don't believe it, please let me know in the comments below. Number eight. Now lately, this one has been repeated so much that some people think it's absolutely a given and it is absolutely true. And that is that cruises are like Petri dishes. Now we have seen this actually in print media, which is really upsetting and damaging to cruise ships. Now we have sailed for many, many years and we have seen how much the crew do to keep the cruise ship sanitary and hygienic um, and disinfected. We have seen that our cabin has been cleaned twice a day. If you've cruised before, you know how clean and safe cruise ships really are. And when there is a virus on board, all of the things that the cruise ship does to make sure that it doesn't spread to other people on board. So some of those things would be, even in the past, instead of having a self-service buffet, that they would move to full service and that they would have the sanitizers out much more often and they would disinfect um, even at a higher um, and more thorough level. So those are all things that cruise ships did do. Now, even more so when cruises do return to North America and some other places where they haven't cruised before, they are doing even more to make sure that things are clean and sanitary and well, things that they now know that they didn't know before. So including that now we have air filtration systems that are changed and new technologies for sanitation. 
Number nine. Now let's get to a fun one. And this is that cruising is all about the eating, all about the food and that you're going to gain a pound a day on a cruise ship. Well, this is a little bit true. Well, it doesn't have to be 100% true, but in reality, the food is plentiful on a cruise ship and on the most part, it is very good as well. But cruising isn't all about the food, of course, and there are ways that you could definitely keep active on a cruise ship so that you could keep that weight gain down. But in reality, um, eating and drinking and enjoying on a cruise ship, well, that does seem to be for a lot of people a good part of what they enjoy on a cruise ship. Let me know if that is you in the comments below. But there is so much more uh, to a cruise. So part of the other things that people love on a cruise, of course, is the entertainment, is the activities, is reconnecting with their loved ones, reconnecting with themselves. There is something about being out on the ocean and the relaxation that you feel that does feel like a little bit of a reconnection, even with yourself and a bit of a reset and traveling by cruise ship. There is something about traveling to a destination on the sea and arriving by ship that is special. And it's different than arriving by a plane or a car. Now, please let me know in the comments below, well, what myths, what misconceptions that you have heard about cruises or that you believe about cruises, please let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them there as well. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please do give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, because I'd love to have you here in the Life While Cruise community. Bye for now. And happy future cruising.